pass over to you, Brother Dixon, for leading us on the table. The ones who help and assist. I just want to say thank you as we lead God's worship service unto him. That him can only know me. Get all honor and glory. If you can grab your Bibles, not pretty much for the last time in respect to understanding the Word of God, period, but in respect to this series of lessons uh, that we was dealing with with the book of Jude, I want to close us out with this series of lessons uh, about Jude's letter, um, which is part seven. And this particular lesson today will be dealing with exhortation and the benediction of Jude's letter or epistle, uh, ever how you see fit to call it. Uh, so let's look at Jude, uh, it's only one chapter, verses 17, uh, well, we're going to read verses, uh, just up to 23, uh, but we really want to close out this particular letter, uh, but let's, let's look at Jude, matter of fact, we'll we just read all the way up to the 25th uh, verse, uh, Jude 1, 17, 23, uh, through, uh, through, Jude 1, 17 through 25. Reading from the King James Version of the Bible, the Bible says, But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they that who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with feet, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Verse 24, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. This pretty much sums up the book of Jude, or should we say the epistle or letter of Jude, of what he's trying to urge us as Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ, to do. There have been problems and there has been a falling away. And Jude is trying to help us from then when he wrote this epistle to now in 2022. In this lesson, we carefully consider the, those exhortations. You'll notice that Jude twice says, but you, Beloved, when we look at verse 17 and 20, he has been describing the evil activities, the words of the false men he's been talking about and dealing with in past time and in the, even in the future. But what Jew does now in these last verses of his epistle or letter, 
He compares that with the but you. The behavior that is required by true holy people. So as I go through this lesson, I need you to ask yourself, are you true, holy people? I want you and I need you to ask yourself that. Are you true? Are you holy? Are you the people of God or what? This is what Jude is trying to get us to see in 2022. Moving forward. There's a few things that I want us to consider to bring this or these last passages of scriptures to light. The first one is the exhortation that he gives to us is remember the words. We have to notice and understand not only the Jew, but the apostles and even Jesus Christ does not make anything hard for us. Reason why things are hard for us and even the understanding of God's word is straightforward. It's because we keep challenging God, Jesus Christ, the apostles, and his word. If you can suppress the challenging of God's word, we all may be able to remember what he has for us to do. Verse 17 says, But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Pay attention to some of these detailed words before the apostles. Jews' exhortation to keep in mind the apostles' faithful teaching is both general and specific. He began his letter by exhorting us to be loyal to the faith once and for all delivered to the holy people. We must keep in mind the whole of the apostles' teachings. Not some, not a fraction, not what you think and not what you feel. But we must keep in whole of the apostles' teachings. Now in verse 17, Jude exhort us to specifically and especially remember their, their, their predictions of the falling away and the false men who would cause it. You have to wrap your mind around the many examples the word of God gives us. Because there is no excuse. No, I don't to go so far. There's no excuse for humanity. And there's definitely no excuse for God's people. Those are examples that's given in God's word is for a reason. In the patriarchal dispensation, carrying over into the Mosaic dispensation, the law, and now in the Christian dispensation which we live today. There's no excuse. What God is trying to get us to see is that I did what I did then so you don't do what you're trying to do today or want to do. 
God did some heavy discipline and destruction in the patriarchal and mosaic dispensation. Up to the point that he had to disappear from them for a while. Technically speaking, God never disappears. But when you call on his name and need him, he's not there to ask. But one day, Jesus Christ came on the scene to get us to understand what we are doing now. It was not like that in the beginning. And Jude is trying to urge us in 2022 that what they did then is happening today and we need to be aware of it. So when we see it coming, step out the way. And if you got to go heads up with it, go heads up with it. That's what Judah's trying to tell. Are we soldiers of what? If we can step away from it, step away from it. But if we need to defend God's word, we need to get on the battlefield. That's what Judah's trying to tell us. And that is what he's trying to close his letter out with us. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 11 through 13, he says, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So it ain't all about just sticking your hand on the TV or just saying, Jesus Christ, I just believe you who you are and I am saved. There is more to it than just being saved. This particular passage of scripture says, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So that's, how, that's a continuous effort to me. So what Judah is trying to tell me, I'm trying to tell us all, that what happens in the church, if it falters, if we fall short of that, we won't be saved either. That's what Jude is trying to tell me. And I believe that is what Jude is trying to tell all of us, especially of the household of faith. We got this thing twisted. I know we have freedom in Christ. We have freedom in God, but we have a work to do. We have a work to do, and it's and not just like it's an easy work. And then I say there's a lot of us. Reason work is not easy. Because we're too consumed with what the world has in front of us. You can't just let it go. Sex, lies, videotapes, TV, news media, celebrities, we just can't let it go. And that, that's just too important to us. But Jews said that's a problem with God. But what do Peter says? Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 2, Verse 1 through 2, he interrupts and says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought, brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernoxious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. How can you speak evil of something good? How can you make mockery of something that is good? How can you validate that? This is real, this is some good stuff. God is good. And if you think God is bad, he's still good. Because he just, he's just God. But Peter also says in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 3, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Too many of us are too lustful. And we can't let things go. But John says, 
in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18, John said, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. How many more times do the apostles have to tell you if it's the last time? We're living in the last days. Stop looking for something else to happen. Some things are going to take place, but you are in the last days now. There's no threshold to cross over and then say, oh, now we're living to the last days. My fellow brothers and sisters, we are in the last days today. God is going to walk through his creation and end all of this. We play around with TV, how things just walk into, into our time, and what we call time, into our space. We see those things. But you got to keep in mind, God is going to walk straight through it and roll it up. And then comes the judgment. But what do Paul say? One of the greatest apostles that we can even read about in the Word of God. In Acts chapter 20 and verse 29 and 30 says, For I know this that after my departing shall grievous wolves into and among you, not sparing the flock. Let me say that again. We got wolves in the church and outside of church. They don't care about you. Do you see what's happening to religion overall? This is not even just the church of Christ. Folks have a complete disrespect for God, period. And I stand here to fight for the church of Christ as me being a Christian and for the true faith of God. But I still have respect for folks who have some ounce of respect for God. This world has not no respect for their creator. They will turn around and ask them to deliver me into the place where you reside in heaven. Are you serious? Are you serious? Verse 30 of that particular passage, the scripture says, Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. We got splits after splits after splits after splits in the church today. And they are drawing disciples of themselves. Brothers and sisters here at Van Dyke, when you see that, stay away from it. When you see these splits happening, you shouldn't be following them. Yeah, I said it. When you got church spreading these ministers, leaving these congregations in the idea of money, power, and control, stay away from it. We need to stop marking these folks because it's the last day and you don't want to be caught up with God hanging out with folks like that who's in the church, tearing up the church. I guarantee you, and I say this fully on video, neither one of them will approach me with that. And I'm well aware of what's going on in the brotherhood. Well aware. And I tell my people here at Van Dyke, stay away from those folks. Know the word of God and know why you are staying away. Split after split after split and it's causing the problems in the church and you look at it, we can't grow nowhere. Our influence on the world is gone. And I see my people here at Van Dyke following these folks. Yeah, I have a problem with you. Because we're saying it's okay. It is not okay. Speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Jude is talking about folks in the church. That's right. Are you holy? Are you true and holy to God for what? Or do I stand here? Do Jews stand here? Do the apostles stand here? 
as though this is this all void of understanding to me. Paul mentioned many times, I will not have you be ignorant. What this lesson also tells us this is that build up yourselves. Build up yourselves. Verse 20 says, But ye be loved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Is your faith holy or not? I don't, why, why do a minister have to sit here and play these games with the people of God, asking, Are you holy or not? Are you holy? You know if you're holy? You know if you're faithful? I'm not making this this up. But ye be loved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. We say all these things, but we find ourselves doing something entirely different. But what this is saying is that repeating the but you, Jew not exhort us to build ourselves up to be strong against the threat of evil men drawing us away into error and division. Many of us, people fight me today, even here at Van Dyke, about error and their own ways. And when I bring Bible into it, it's an issue. But if the world says something about it, oh, it's okay. One thing I like about myself, I'm very analytical in regards to when it comes down to the common sense of God's word. I can refute people just with the common sense of God's word. Because soon what comes out of your mouth is that because of what I feel, that's dumb right there. And it's not parallel. I actually say, you know, this is how I feel. And it's patternized. Listen to how I'm, now listen to how I'm putting this now. Now I, 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 I can sit down with you. When you say, you know what, I feel because it's patternized with the word of God. And I'm trying to bring sense into the word of God to make it applicable to your everyday life. When I say it's patternized, I said this before, you cannot put a circle in a triangle or a square in a, uh, a circle. What do I mean by that? When the Bible speaks of where, you know what, don't be drunken. You gotta understand back in those days, what caused a man to be drunken compared to what would cause a man to have an unsober mind today? Are you, are you, do y'all find me where I'm coming from? You have to put a, whatever the patterns God set up then, it's the same patterns we use today. What causes you to be non-sober today? That's what that passage of scripture is dealing with then. What caused them to have an unsober mind, not to focus on God? It's the same thing today. That's what I mean by power. Don't give me a triangle and try to put it in a square, because it ain't going to work. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. Jude has two strengthers to recommend in verse 20. He says, your most holy faith. He says, again, this is not a faith you invent or that comes from within you. It is a faith once for all delivered to the holy people the faith that comes from the apostles of Jesus Christ. But not only your most holy faith, but what about praying in the Holy Spirit? Praying in the Holy Spirit. This is the second of two modes of communication between us and God. First, God speaks to us by the faith once for all delivered to the apostles. Let me say that again. First, God speaks to us by the faith once for all delivered by the apostles. So if God is speaking to you any other kind of way, <laughs> we talked about this before, you might want to get out of the presence of those people. If you know the word of God, he's not saying that. Be careful of these spirits, because spirits are trying to get into this world. They can, but they're trying. Second, we speak to God by prayer and through the Holy Spirit who intercedes for us. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. God speaks to you by faith that once and for all delivered to the apostles. I'm not making this up, brothers and sisters. Sometimes folks say, preachers never make this stuff up. I'm not. This is how God is speaking to us. So, so that's why you, if you want to know how God is speaking to you, you want to you want to know what God is saying to you, baby, open up the word of God and read it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Brother Jackson, <laughs> why do I have to sit there and pull my heart out day after day after day and keep telling you open up the word of God? When you can live a successful life and productive life, when I'm not around, what would you do? 
As my parents tell me, if they're not around, what would you do? This is your roadmap, your spiritual righteous roadmap. And then second, whenever we speak to God by prayer and through the Holy Spirit. So that's telling you, you have to pray. If you don't pray, and pray in the parallelism of the Word of God. The third one, I'm, I'm, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm done. I, 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 I think you're, you're with me in regards to the ending of Jude's epistle. This is the last one, this is the last one. Keep yourselves. <clears throat> Keep yourselves. The first one was remember the words. And also, that second one, build yourselves up. And his last one is keep yourselves. Keep yourselves. First 21 says, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. See, and I, I, I've talked about this before. This exhortation has two verbs. Keep and wait. Keep and wait. We keep our our we keep or preserve ourselves in God's love through the faith and prayer. So if you don't have faith, if you're not praying, how are you going to keep yourself from God? That's simple. We are encouraged by our expectations of the day we shall enter our eternal home. Are we ready? Are we ready? We need help from God. When Jude says, keep yourselves in God's love, he is making us responsible for ourselves. If you today are not responsible for yourselves like many people are, don't want to be accountable for nothing, you, have a pro you, will, you will have a very serious problem getting into heaven. That's your responsibility. Of course, we also say we are, are kept in Jesus Christ, Jude 101. He says, Jude 1, 24, it says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. But not only just help from God, but helping one another. We talk about a Bible class. We also help to keep each other. In Jude 1, 22 and 23, closing this out, and of some have compassion, making a difference. How many of us have compassion? And others say with fear, putting them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Listen to these three approaches. Have a gentle approach. Have the urgent approach. And a combined approach. Show mercy in the fear. Which of these approaches we use depends upon the person and the circumstances. We normally help each other to be kept in Christ by gentle and understanding encouragement. On uh, some occasions, a rougher approach may be required. We need to be discerning. We need to be discerning. Brother, we need to be discerning. I'm not beating up on anybody today. I'm not beating up on any of my counterparts or else who's in the pulpit, preachers or things of like that. But we need to be discerned. How can I tell you to stray away from something when I'm seeing my other fellow brothers and sisters or even leaders doing something contrary to God's word or God's will in this way? I have to have much, uh, uh, enough discernment and wisdom to be able to Say something to them, to correct them, and not in an easy and gentle way. Because some folks don't even get to that level, you really can't tell them nothing. I don't care how old you are. That's a problem with God. And you have to understand about this age thing, because sometimes we get this thing wrapped up because of my age. Physically, you might be older than me. But spiritually, you're not. Well, why do you say that, Lionel? Because your actions and the words that come out of your mouth say something. Well, why do you still say that? Because it does not go with the word of God. 
If I speak to you from the word of God, I think you should speak to me from the word of God. If you speak to me opinionated, that's a problem. And that's what we are trying to get in the church. That's what Jew had a problem with. That's what the apostles had a problem with. That's what Jesus Christ had a problem with. That's what God has a problem with. Jesus Christ simply just wants us to understand that his father or him or his spirit is there for us. And he wants us to be saved. Somebody needs to get baptized this morning. Somebody needs to be saved this morning. Somebody needs to rededicate their life back to God. What are we scared of? I said this in Bible class this morning. I, God is so good. The things that we might think is bad or what he does, because we think is bad, is still good. I would rather be in his hands, regardless of what he do. I don't care what it is. If he tosses and twists me up and down his towel, I regard, I'm his. I have enough faith that whatever he does, he does it because of his own glory. I'd rather be in his hands, being baptized or being saved and dedicated, rededicated in life, than not being in the hands of mankind and the decisions they make. Look what we're going through right now. We have to get our minds wrapped around the same thing Jude mind was wrapped around. He simply could have just said, you know what, here's a death, here's a burial, and here's a resurrection of Jesus Christ. Here, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. He easily could have just spoke that, just like all the other apostles spoke. But what he's telling us, there's something that's happening in the church. Somebody came into the church, became a child of God, and went right back out into the world and tried to come back in as wolves. That's the problem. And we today see that now, and we embellish in a lot of that stuff. That's a problem. Somebody need to be baptized. Pray the word of God. Believe the same. Repent of your sins. Change your mind in the right direction towards God. It's very simple. Confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, but that's not the only thing you have to do. Or that you should do it. It ought to be done. But you need to go down to the water bearer of baptism and put on Christ and be added to the one true church that's found in the Bible. I don't make this up. Don't challenge me. Challenge God. And I'm telling you, don't challenge y'all. But don't challenge me about it because that's the word of God. Read it for yourself. It's not going to be an easy walk. It's going to be hard. But I'd rather be in God than be in mankind's hands. Be baptized today if you need to be baptized. Please, I'm begging you, be baptized. If you sin, you strayed away, your disposition is wrong with God, repent of your sins and ask God to forgive you. You brought the church to an open shame. Let the church know. We don't need to know details, but let the church know. And get your life back right, God. We hit this together. Let's bring us whole again with God. Amen? Amen. Let's stand and sing the song of invitation. Come. If you meet that desire, come, please.